guys, what is up, Vero here, and I wanted to make a video showing you guys how I make my YouTube thumbnails. We will be making one currently for Life is Strange, which will have an end result like this. Now, I am a complete idiot, and I already recorded this video, which is why this thumbnail is already made, but my settings in XSplit were a little off, so there were little black borders around Photoshop, and I'm very picky about the quality of my content, and I just didn't like it, so I was just like, you know what, we're just going to re-record it and try and create this all over again. But this is the thumbnail we're going to be making. It might not end up looking exactly like this, but whatever, this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to close that one out. <laughs> and so what you need to do is create a new file. And by the way, I will be using Photoshop CS6. Now, different settings might be different depending on which version of Photoshop you're using or if you're using a completely different program but trying to adapt it to the version that you're using. So just note that. Um, I'm also someone that has been using Photoshop for about half of my life, so I know all the key shortcuts and stuff, so I will try to teach those to you and try to walk you through some of them in case you might be a little bit newer to Photoshop. So we want to make a new file. We want to make it 1280 by 720. We also want to make sure to have a resolution of 72 because this is going to go on the web. It is not something that we're printing out, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to drag this out and we're going to drag all these pictures that I already have opened here and then we're just going to close them because we don't need them anymore. I have a picture of myself that we're dragging over and then some Life is Strange text. Close all that out and then if you drag Photoshop up to the corner it'll snap it back in. So now we want to kind of edit all of these but I'm going to start with this picture of myself. Now when I create thumbnails for YouTube I like to have an image of myself. Usually I do one custom for a specific series, but I forgot to do one earlier and I'm just too lazy to do one. So we're just going to use an old picture that I already have. To zoom out, just press Control minus or just use the zoom tool, which is over here, and then press Control t on your keyboard or go to edit. Either click on free transform or transform and scale. And we're going to just make this fit. Now we want this to not look wonky, so we're going to hold shift down while we're dragging the left mouse button and make this fit in this size. So that actually looks pretty good. We're going to zoom back in. And what I like to do is I like to position the image where I'm going to do it before I'm going to edit anything. Use arrow keys kind of to move it around a little bit more. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll kind of pull it all the way over there, but I don't know if I want that much of my face cut off. It looks a little weird, so we're going to maybe do it about there. Next, you want to create a layer mask. So to do that, we're going to go to the bottom of our layers tool over here and click on layer mask. It's basically this little square with a circle in the middle of it. Make sure you have the layer mask selected and you're going to use your brush tool by selecting B on the keyboard or just clicking over here. And we're going to just kind of erase all of this. The reason I really like using the brush tool or <laughs> using the layer mask tool with the brush tool instead of an eraser is because it's a lot easier to edit something later on if you notice discrepancies in it instead of using the eraser tool because you can't go back and undo that if it's so far along during your Photoshop process. So to open up this little brush part you just right click on there and maybe make it a little bit bigger. So what I usually do is I'll erase kind of all the little bits that I don't want. Make it smaller, lower the hardness, and get the more finer details. On your keyboard if you use the bracket keys you can make them smaller and bigger by using the left and right one. So we're just going to erase the rest of this background. And see, this is another reason why I like the layer mask tool. So if I accidentally erase some of my shoulder, oh no, my shoulder is missing. If you press X on the keyboard or click on this little button right here, it'll swap between the colors. And then if you go over it with white, it reveals it. So black makes the image disappear, while white or black makes it disappear and white makes it reappear. I'm confusing myself. I've literally recorded this video like three times, so bear with me. And then we're just going to erase this little part that's like right there. It doesn't have to look perfect. Again, it's a thumbnail. It'll be small. Um, that was kind of something I had to learn was that I don't need to be too picky because you're not really going to be able to see that much. So next we want this layer of mass, of max, of max. I keep saying, I keep trying to say mask, and we're going to resize that using the exact same tool the free transform just so that more of her is in it and then we're going to add my layer back in there and see now I notice since I put my layer back up there that there's some spots that I need to fix so we're just going to select the layer mask and the brush tool and just kind of erase that really quick 
So one thing that I like to do sometime with my thumbnails is I like to add a outer glow. So we go to the effects pane and then click on outer glow. And the size and spread kind of depends on you. You can see where there's areas that I missed. So we will be fixing that. I'm going to set mine to normal, lower the opacity. And 35 looks pretty good. We're going to lower the spread a little bit and lower the size and the spread, sorry. Just so it doesn't look so crazy. Make it spread a little bit bigger. And then you kind of just play around with it and however you see fit. And so you can see the areas where I missed, so we're just going to go and touch those up. So it doesn't look so weird. I actually think this could look a little bit better. So we're going to increase the size. Decrease the spread. Increase the size a little bit more. And you kind of just play around until you get one that you like. So I think 12 and 40 look pretty good. We might fix those later. It just all depends. Now we're going to reveal. You just hit this little eye tool. And it hides and reveals things. And we're going to resize the Life is Strange text. Just lower that down a little bit using the free transform so that it fits there. Um, make it a little bit smaller. And just put that right there. And then I'd like to add a glow to that too so it's a little bit more noticeable. You can either add a stroke if you want to do that, um, but since there's so many areas of the text that look a little funny, we're just going to add an outer glow to this one. And I got all these images online. You can pretty much find anything on the internet. Uh, just be careful when you're using other people's stuff. Uh, make sure it's not like copywritten or anything. So we're just going to increase the spread, or we're going to increase the size, not the spread, because it won't affect the other little parts that are a little kind of funny looking. And then we got that. All right, so now we want to add some text. So we're just going to click on the little text tool over here. Make sure it's white. It doesn't really matter, but white's just easier to see. And we're going to make this say episode one. Now the text that you use all depends on you. I'm going to be using Clairehand TT because it kind of reminds me of the text that's actually used in the game. Generally the font that I use for everything is called Mermaid, but you can find dozens and dozens and hundreds and thousands of fonts on Defont.com. They're all free and there's some pretty awesome kick-ass fonts there. So this is the text we're going to use. Um, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, so we're just going to use a transform tool for that too because I just think it's the easiest way and put that right there so it kind of lines up with her head. But we want to add a little bit of effects to the text because it looks a little boring. So we're going to click on effects again and we're going to add a gradient overlay to it because I just think it looks nicer with the gradient. So click on the actual gradient right here and then you want to position everything so that you can see the text over there. And I'm going to click in the middle of this so that it adds another little tab for a color. We're going to select the black one first and we're actually going to pick a color from up here. Now what I like to do is I like to usually make everything kind of match. Um, I just think it looks a little bit nicer. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. But for the bottom one, I usually do a darker color. And then the middle will be something that kind of transitions it a little bit better. So we'll kind of lighten it. And you kind of just want to play around. Um, you obviously don't have to use two of these if you don't want to. You can use just... You can use a solid color. You, oh, we accidentally added another one, didn't we? So if you add another one, just click on it and hit delete. I totally just messed everything up, didn't I? Oops. Okay, there we go. Breaking everything. So, I kind of just go through and mess with each one. We'll make that one a little bit lighter. This one, I want actually to be a little bit more pink like the other ones. And if you're not sure about the color, you can always just grab the middle one, copy the color, with Control c Click on that color again and just control V and then just light it a little bit. I consider that cheating, but it makes it easier than that way you're not clicking all over the screen like a crazy person. Uh, so I also want to add a stroke to it. Uh, the stroke usually depends on how big the text is. I usually do 3 to 5 for smaller text. If it's large text, 10 to 12, um, anything above that, maybe 15. But it really just depends on you and what you like. We're also going to add an outer glow to this too. I really like my outer glows today, what can I say? So add, so just increase the size just a little. You can also do a colored outer glow if you want. Um, that's really up to you. Get like one of the colors there and it has like a nice little red outer glow if you want. Uh, it's again up to you. Um, I'm probably just going to keep it white. 
Another thing you can also do is add a inner shadow and inner glow as well. Um, I'm just going to stick to inner shadow because I just think it looks a little bit nicer. And we're going to actually pick one of the colors from up here and drag this down a little bit. We actually saw that one card large copy, so we'll just do that. So you can either make it lighter and give it kind of a little brighter color or make it darker to give it a little shadows in the corner. So we're going to do that. You can also add an inner glow, which will add a little bit lighter color to it. We're going to add that color again and then do that and then set it to normal. And it kind of just brightens it up a little bit. You can lower the opacity if you want. Um, it's really up to you. We're going to stick to 65. I think that looks good. So that is the main part of the text. If you want to just copy the text, usually what I'll do is just duplicate the layer. So you just drag the layer to this little post-it note at the bottom that looks like the little flap is clipped in, and it'll duplicate it, and then double-click on the text, select it, and then we're going to just type part one. And drag that down, and it looks the exact same, but we're going to make it a little bit bigger. And actually make that a little bit smaller. And then we can just maybe make the stroke a little bit bigger. Like I said, usually for larger images, I'll make the stroke a little bigger. I think 10. Actually, I like 9 better. So there's that. Uh, now we want to add a border to it. I just think it looks a lot nicer. There's a couple ways to do a border. So one way is to just grab the little rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. Um, you want to make it line up with this, but you can add a stroke, and that'll create the layer in there, and then you can lower the fill color, and it'll just add, I always do that, it'll add that to it. But the easiest way, I think, is to make a new layer, and then select G, or just click on the Paint Bucket tool. We're going to fill it in with whatever color you want. I usually do black because white's a little too blaring on your eyes when you're working on something like this. Fill it in with black, then we're going to go to Fill, lower the opacity to zero, go to the effects, click on Stroke, change the position to inside, and you'll notice the border appears up. But I like to make the border kind of match the rest of the image. So we're going to do that. And then for my border inside, I usually do between 5 and 10. It's really up to you. Um, I think we'll do 7. I don't like too thick of a border, but some people do, so it's up to you. And then you want to kind of adjust the text around it uh, so it's not being covered by the border. So we're going to move these down just a little bit using the arrow keys, just selecting them, and then pushing down. And then there you have it. That is my thumbnail. Something else that I also sometimes do is I will create a new layer here, fill it in with black, and then lower the opacity to between 30 and 40. You can do something lighter, and it kind of makes the text stand out a little bit more and makes you stand out a little bit more. But that is completely up to you if you want to do that or not, but that is basically how I make my YouTube thumbnails. And if you have any specific questions about any of the tools that I use in Photoshop, any of the techniques, whatever, feel free to ask in the comment section below, or you can tweet me or email me. If you want to see more of these videos, please let me know. If there's any other techniques that I do or anything that you've noticed on any of my videos that you want me to show you, just let me know and I'll make a video of it. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already, and be sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.